Husky and Mansfield Sr., and they got a little taste of what either one of these teams is going to face on Saturday. And, and watching the pace that both of those teams played, is one of these coaches maybe a little more nervous than the other? For Saturday night? For a matchup. For a matchup? I don't think so because I think, yeah, they, they, they both looked at Sandusky and they said, listen, that's a pretty good basketball team. But you expect that. They're very athletic, very quick. But the other thing they looked at is, boy, look how small they are. <laughs> you know, you know they're, they're, they look like young kids, and they are a young basketball team, where these teams, especially Lexington, is playing with six, seven, six, eight kids out on the perimeter. I had to laugh at the comment. Joe Balog was up here before the game, and he made a he smiled. He said, "How many sets do you think they ran in that first game?" <laughs> I think the round number was zero. <laughs> Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, for the Lexington Minutemen, under the direction of head coach Scott Hamilton, in his 11th season, Alex Depperschmidt continues to be in the starting lineup. Elijah Hudson scored 14 in the sectional win over Willard. The freshman, Braden Fogel, was the highlight reel at the end. Had the game-winning steal, dunk, and he hit some key free throws in that win over Willard. Baden Forp with a double-double, 14 points and 12 rebounds in the sectional win over the Crimson Flashes. For Shelby, under the direction of their second-year head coach, Greg Galloway, and boy, they've won back-to-back -back MOAC titles in each of his first two seasons. They are led by Alex Bruscott, who scored 24 in the win over Ontario, going over 1,000 points for his career. Bryson Baker had 10 points against the Warriors, and Casey Lance scored 13 in that sectional championship. I I'm guessing what Joe was saying about sets. We're going to see a, a little bit more structured offense here in our second game. Well, you know, I, I think you're right, but, you know, Shelby will try to get out and, and, and give a little pressure. At least I, I, I really assume they will. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think we're going to see more than, than what we did in the first game. We're going to see a little bit more maybe off the ball movement than we did in the first game, but we're still going to see both teams trying to get the ball to the paint. One thing that we didn't see in the first game was a lot of post entries. Most of the time it was dribble penetration penetration to get to the paint. Here, I think if you're Lex, you're gonna see post entries. If you're Shelby, you'll see some post entries, but also but a lot of dribble penetration trying to break down the defense. Well, Lexington is gonna to try to defeat Shelby for the second time this season. They defeated the Whippets 66 to 59 back on February 14th. Braden Fogel led Lex with 21 points. Hudson Moore added 18. Baden Forup scored 18 and grabbed 11 rebounds. Casey Lance led Shelby with 17. Alex Bruscotter had 16, so a, a little bit of an off night for Bruscotter in that first matchup. And when you look at what they've done in tournament play, Lexington with a 7 to 4 edge over Shelby in the postseason. None of that matters now. They come out, it's a fresh game, and it's an opportunity for a, to play for a district championship on Saturday. Well, you're right. And, you know, Alex Bruckstadter, yeah, he didn't have the stats in that first game that he would like to have. But, you know, I could see Alex Bruckstadter tonight having a, a young man 6'7", guard him on the perimeter. If Alex beats him to the basket, he's got to face a guy 6'8". So that that's tough going. And, you know, it's no secret. Lex knows, number one, they have to defend Brock Stoddard. Casey Lance, also another guy who gives them an offensive weapon. Isaiah Ramsey is another guy on that front line that gives them some athletic ability, and he has the ability to score inside. Yeah, he does. He's not a perimeter player. He's, what, 6'2", 6'3", and uh, you know his strength is getting the ball to the basket. Uh, but again, uh, from the first game, and, Going to the basket against the size of Lexington is different than going to the basket against most basketball teams. We're going to pause now for the playing and singing of our national anthem.
As we continue with our Spitzer Motors pregame show, I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins. Lexington getting ready to take on Shelby. Lexington, the number three seed. Shelby, the number two seed. The winner punches their ticket to the district championship on Saturday, and that is a matchup with the number one seed, Sandusky Blue Streaks. Lexington started the season with a 12-game winning streak. The second half of the year saw Lexington go 6-4 and four down the stretch. They lost two of their last three regular season games. They lost to Mansfield Senior, a game that cost them an outright OCC title, and they, they kind of struggled there down the stretch. What did you see last week against Willard that some things that they might have to clean up if they're going to come out victorious tonight? Well, number one, I thought there were times in that second half especially where Lexington could put Willard away, but they couldn't do it for various reasons. D different things happened. You know, I think they have to have that killer attitude that when you get a team down, you stomp them. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you do strong. Uh, conversion defense, going from offense to defense, was certainly not a bright spot last week against Willard. When Willard rebounded, which was not often, but when they rebounded, they were able to get the ball out on the run, find the numbers, find the open players, and get some great looks at the basket. Shelby, I'm sure, is going to try to do that tonight. But it's easier said than done because you've got to get the defensive rebound. Now, conversely, Shelby with only three losses on the regular season. They lost to Madison, Marion Harding, and this Lexington team, 66-59. to they beat an Ontario team that was undermanned, and there were some stretches there where they did not look as sharp as I know Greg Galloway would like them to look in tournament play. Well, you're right, and, you know, we talked about it last week. One thing these teams that are favored, that are good teams like both these are, you want to be playing at your best right now. During the season, it's a long season. Starts in October goes through February, here we are into March. You're going to have some ups, you're going to have some downs. But right now, you can't afford to have any downs. You've got to be playing consistent basketball, and you know I'm sure both teams are striving for that tonight. Well, it's win or go home, and the dream down the road is a state championship. Lexington has won two of those, and, and I think you know a little bit about those. The first one was back in 1989, the second two years later. That 89 title came against West Geauga. That was an 89 to 57 game. Not a very close game for a state title game. What do you remember about that afternoon? Well, I remember that once we got a lead, the second period, we never missed a shot. West Geauga was full court pressure, and we had some guys that were unselfish, good ball handlers, and we made that extra pass and got layups. I remember one player in particular, Tommy Scholl, scored 32 points and went the whole night without missing a shot. You don't expect that in that kind of a game. I said it was good coaching, but in reality <laughs> it was pretty good playing, wasn't it? Well, the second title was a little tighter, a two-point win over Dayton Chaminade Julien. That game, I remember because that was my first season on television here in Mansfield, so I had an opportunity to cover a state championship team my first season. So the bar was really set, and it's been all downhill from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. And those are great memories, and to me it's like yesterday, but I guess it wasn't, was it? Now, <laughs> no, because that was over 35 years ago. Now, I guess you've never heard this question. Which team is better? Oh, I heard it today. Somebody <laughs> asked me today, and I'm not going to answer you either. <laughs> I, and I don't know. I mean, you know, I, the, the best answer I have, if I was coaching one of the teams, probably the other one had the advantage. <laughs> but let me tell you another story, Brian. Last week in the Willard game, uh, Willard against Lexington, we saw the young man from Willard score is 1,000 points, or he had done it earlier. Max Dawson, yes. Max Dawson did, and you asked me who were the five Willard players to score 1,000 by the time they were juniors, and I only got four of them right. The one I missed was Nick Dials, and who did I run into about five minutes ago? Nick <laughs> Dials, who is coaching down at Capitol, and he said he got phone calls from friends saying Collins can't even remember you. Oh, 
but my memory is good tonight, so I'm okay. Shelby controls the opening tip, and we are underway in this district semifinal between Shelby and Lexington, and a foul, the first of the night, is going to go against Big Lex. And Shelby is able to get the ball to the rim right there, and I said in the first game, and I'll say it now, I know they called a foul right there, but expect as you're in the district now to let a little bit more play. It's going to be a little bit more physical. Bryson Baker at the line. He misses. Bryson has not had a great year from the free throw line this year. And he misses them both, but Shelby keeps the possession alive thanks to an offensive rebound, and then they give it up. Lex with quick hands gets the turnover. Their first look, and Hudson Moore trying to bully his way inside, which when you're that big and strong, that's smart. There's the freshman, Fogel. He misses his first shot. And I think that's a matchup that Shelby's going to have a problem with. Fogel is, is very good with the dribble. Isaiah Ramsey reverses the basketball. Lance with a runner, doesn't go, and four up with the first of what I'm sure will be many rebounds. And Fogel spins in the lane and drops. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Hey, did I call it? I think they're going to have trouble with him off the dribble. He is. He doesn't take a lot of three-point shots because he knows his limitations right now, and he can beat too many players off the dribble. Fogel, the lefty. The hero in the sectional title game, and he makes the first free throw to complete the three-point play. Lex up early. It'll be interesting defensively what Lex does tonight. They're playing man-to-man -man right now, and Shelby is yet to score, so why not stay in it? Running a little flex action, which is pick the picker. Russ Goddard misfires. I think most people from Shelby believe they're going to have to do a better job of Shooting the perimeter shot. I think they have to do a better job transition. Ramsey misses the layup and not so great offense early. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will stay with Lexington. 6.33 to go. Just underway here from Arrow Arena at Ashland High School. Another packed house. I think if you're Coach Galloway, you're happy. The offense has gotten some good looks, just not able to convert them. Fogel There's down the on the block to four post up. entry. Tough matchup. Double down, and they get a foul. Foul called on Bryson Baker. That's his first. We always used to tell our players when you're going to double down, you don't double with your hands. Double with your body. Go after the ball like it's a fumble. That's two fouls on Baker, so he's going to be coming out right away, and in comes another freshman. Braden DeVito, who played very well in that sectional title game, gave Greg Galloway a lot of valuable minutes off the bench, and Elijah Hudson for Lexington. He just put his head down and went right to the hoop. So far, Lex with shots inside three feet, two feet. Ramsey from behind the three-point line. That's not his strength. Hudson has it blocked by Ramsey. That is his strength, a very good defensive player. It is, and that's three from the outside and another offensive rebound and a foul on Forum. <laughs> Baden Forup with his first personal. It's important for Lex to keep him in the ball game. Of course, he's a rim protector as well as an offensive threat, obviously. Lex was able to get Willard in foul trouble in that sectional title game. Two Crimson Flashes fouled out. And they're in Willard not being a deep team and really going all season without being in foul trouble. But you're right, because of Lex's size, was able to get Willard in, the, in trouble there. Now it's interesting. They score, and I would think Shelby's going to come up with a little pressure. Try to speed things up a little bit, and this is smart. I think Fogel, the best ball handler they have. Fogel in the lane. And, yeah, if you're going to 
really try to go after the basketball and not get it, Fogel's going to make you pay. Russ Goddard pulls up from the free throw line. That was a good job of penetrating and stepping back for the jumper. Well, and he got off to a slow start last week. Greg Galloway has to be very happy to see him hit that first shot. Four up between two defenders, not able to make it. And up ahead in transition is Casey Lance, and Shelby pulls it within one. And I think that's where they're going to have to have success if they're going to be in this game, and that's transition. Hudson Moore. Elijah Hudson from the elbow. So far, he scored twice now. That's a good sign for Lex for him to knock down that short jumper. You see Shelby's quick to get the ball inbounds. And a foul. Bruss Cotter is going to be called with an offensive foul. Let's see. He puts his shoulder down. I, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. You're, you're right. I, but a big one for Shelby. Uh, you don't help inside out. Four up at the other end, and he traveled. Greg Galloway won an offensive foul at that end. <laughs> and this is right after I said the officials let you play a little bit more. But. <laughs> Russ Cotter, 6'7", but he's a guard. More comfortable facing the basket, but we've seen him play very well from the block. Ball poked away by Hudson Moore. Good job denying by Hudson Moore that time. DeVito with not a good passing choice right there. Lex is going to be patient. Elijah Hudson from the perimeter doesn't go. Russ Cotter. With the rebound inside to Ramsey, loses the handle, it will go to Lex. And he had a couple of purple jerseys breathing down his necks. I don't know about you, but I've had more of an opportunity to breathe in the first quarter of this game yeah. as opposed to the first game of our doubleheader. Right away, Elijah Hudson gets subbed out. I wouldn't doubt because of that quick three he took. I think the coaches are saying, listen, baby, we can pound it inside. Not that you can't shoot it, but give it a chance. Joe Caudill into the lineup for Lexington. Gave Scott Hamilton some valuable minutes in that win over Ontario. Ball sticking or a little Willard, bit right now. Me. Not a lot, of, uh, a lot of movement off the ball yet. Lob it inside to Forup. Ultimately, that's what they want, though. Forup. Not able to get it to drop. And they're going to call that on Fogel. That's not a good foul to foul 50 feet from the basket. And that's the second on Fogel with 318 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, that's that's not what you want. Again, I think he's a key for them. He was a key for them the first time around, scoring 21 points. But I don't know if Shelby has anybody that can stay with him especially in the full court with him, the ball in his hands. Well, he leaves with 3.13 to go in the first quarter. Let's see if Shelby can take advantage. DeVito attacks on the baseline, and it's out of bounds. Tried to kick it out to Carson Brubaker, and the Whippets turn it over. That's two turnovers by, by DeVito here early. In the first round game, Shelby uh, only had eight turnovers. So far tonight, they've got three here in the first period. Can't have wasted possessions in a game like this. Hey, look Good inside to Forup. That's a soft jumper on the baseline for Baden Forup. That is. Good turnaround jumper. Bruckstadter had good defense, just better offense. He's got a nice touch on the jumper, but he doesn't push it out beyond the about 10, 15 feet. No, right, but he knows. He knows his limitations. And I think one of my idols, Clint Eastwood said, a man's got to no. know his limitations. I think that was in one of the Dirty Harry movies. Yes. <laughs> but he sounded a lot meaner than you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Russ Goddard pulls up from the free throw line, and he's feeling it here in the first quarter. I mean, that's, that's a good look for him, and Again, he didn't have too many good looks the first round, first time they played, but today's 
Couple of good looks there. Moore from about eight, and it's blocked. And an off-balance offensive rebound doesn't go by Chance Basilone, a sophomore. And Shelby with an opportunity. They can tie it with a three. Bruscotter forcing it in the lane. And perhaps not a good decision by Alex Bruscotter, but he's going to get rewarded with a foul. Well, I, from my view, I thought he got fouled a couple of times before that. Uh, but Hudson Moore is a big, strong, tough kid, and he was bodying him up. Who needs Google when we have Adam Thompson? Well, Magnum Force was the uh, Dirty Harry movie you were looking for. Oh, is that right? Yes. You sure he didn't say it in one of the other ones? Well, he may have said it in a few of them. But. Yeah, yeah. Russ Goddard can make it a one-point game. He struggled in game one. So far, he's not in game tournament game action. He's got six. Hudson Moore hounded by Isaiah Ramsey. And that's going to be an offensive foul, the illegal screen by Caudill. It's interesting that against pressure, and Shelby gives good pressure, not great, but against pressure, Lexington's two main ball handlers are both over, what, 6'5". It's Hudson Moore and it's Fogel. Both of them, uh, I coaches, and they've done a good job handling the ball in the half court. Ramsey looks inside. Russ Goddard launches a three, falls right into the hands of Alex Depperschmidt. Moore for three. Good box out that time by Shelby. Good transition. Three in the air by Brubaker. And Brubaker. Shelby takes the lead for the first time tonight. He just had too good of a look. 36, or uh, uh, Brubaker is... Uh, 31% uh, three-point shooter, but that time it was just wide open. 13-11, Shelby were under a minute to go in the first quarter. And Moore will back it out. Bass alone for three. And Shelby's off and running, three on two. Good Euro, great move. Basilo not a match for Bruss Goddard in transition. He now has eight, and it's a four-point Shelby lead. I would think Lex would probably go for the last shot this quarter. We'll see how they run it. Rejects the screen, quick shot. Going to give Shelby, no, Lex rebounds. They still have 12 seconds left. That's, Four up in the lane. That's what you want to do. Caudill, the freshman, high off the glass. It's batted around, and DeVito launches, and that will do it for the first quarter. Shelby with a four-point lead as we head to the second. You're watching Boys High School Tournament Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warrant. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around We are back here in Ashland as we get ready to start the second quarter. Shelby with a four-point lead. The winner of tonight's game takes on Sandusky in the district title game on Saturday and an offensive foul called on Baden Forup, and that's his second personal. And that is. Fogel's already on the bench with two, and uh, coaches decided to rest him here at the beginning of the quarter, and 
now with another key player with two, you know, how do they go? How do they react to it? Welcome you know, to all of you watching our live stream from all over. And understand we have some uh, people taking a break from sunbathing to watch some high school basketball. Well, I, I, I've got some friends down in St. Augustine, but I have a feeling they're probably out on the beach watching. <laughs> you know, no, you can watch with your phone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, remember sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, before the game, Brian, you and I were at a local establishment enjoying, uh, enjoying a salad, and all the Shelby people that came in said the same thing. We need to shoot better from the perimeter. Well, they've done a pretty good job from the perimeter so far. Russ Goddard has gotten off to a nice start. He's got eight, and that's not a perimeter shot, but Shelby will take it. Casey Lance with a two-hand slam. Yeah, he just beat him off the dribble, and no help that time, and with two fouls, Baden Four probably a little hesitant to help. So that is the anti Perimeter shot right well, there. Well, yeah, yeah. And it figures. I start talking about perimeter <laughs> shooting, and they get a dunk. Shelby now with a six-point cushion. Shelby, the number two seed. Lex, the number three. Fogel back in the game now with two fouls. Pull-up jumper. That's where he had great success last week and late in the season. Nice defensive transition. Get the steal. Brubaker Lex is running. Turnover. And up ahead to Caudill, the freshman. Inside to four, up, up strong with two hands. And again, just like we saw some in the, the first, first game, open three, but they know their strength is pounding it in. Pounded into Fogel, he's tough to defend. Russ Goddard is going to pick up the foul on Hudson Moore. <laughs> That's his second. So he's got two. Forup has two. And Fogel with two. And no one for Shelby really with any foul trouble. So that is not what Scott Hamilton had in mind in this district semifinal game, watching three of his starters pick up two fouls in the first half. And with a lot of second quarter to go, Shelby's going to be at the free throw line, now shooting one and one, soon to be in the double bonus. And they're a 74% free throw shooting team. And you and I have seen so many teams this year that shoot in the 50, 52, 53% range. Well, not Shelby. They're a good free throw shooting team. So overall, this is not the team you want to foul. Lex is also pretty good. Russ Goddard with nine. He's an 85% free throw shooter. And he splits the pair. The Brian Harder jinx right there. I'm taking you. Well, no, I'm not taking you to Vegas. <laughs> Fogel spins in the lane. And that drops. And that, again, the pull up from about 10 to 15. He's so strong with that. Attacking on the baseline, and another shot for Max Hess. Hess just challenged four up coming over, and you know he knew he had two fouls, so he challenged him, and Hess wins that matchup. Fogel spins in the lane, and I tell you what, he has hit a lot of the rim here in the first half. But he's getting the lucky bounce. This ball poked out of bounds. It will stay. You know, I, the floor. I go back to the last regular season game where I thought Fogel has kept them in the game against senior high. Last week against Willard, I thought he was the difference for, uh, for Lexington. Again tonight, again, you know what he's going to do. He's going to spin and turn to his left and shoot that left-handed short jumper. Hudson. Oh, that was a tough shot as he reversed his angle inside. All right, now. The last time he shot a three when he was wide open. Coach sent him to the bench. I think he got the message. <laughs> this time he pumped fake, took a right to the basket. Don't tell me the bench is not a motivator. 20 to 19. Shelby with a one point lead. The message got through. 
And Lex pulls to within one. They can regain the lead here. And Shelby goes, falls back to a zone, an odd front zone right here. Lex is just slowing it down a little bit to get set. Three in the air from the corner, doesn't go. And rebound down to Hess. Up ahead, and a shot in transition by Bryson Baker falls. And we mentioned last week, I don't know of a team that does more Euros than Shelby. That time he had to do a Euro to avoid the offensive charge, and he gets the layup. Hunts it for three, and the corner is good. Adel has nine, and we're tied at 22. And that's what's going to have to be open if Shelby's going to pound it in or keep the defense inside and make you shoot from the outside. Russ Goddard can't answer, and Lex now trying to go back on top. Shelby going man-to-man off, off a miss. Fogel, and i tell you what, Scott Hamilton probably held his breath as Fogel Close to an offensive foul, but they're going to call a block. He is, and Lex has a few players, but especially him, he has the ability to break you down one-on-one. Yeah, sometimes you might think he over dribbles, but he has the ability to break you down and get to the hoop and get a shot in his range. Nice pass. Nice look inside, Baden Forup. And Lex back up by two. That was a great dribble penetration and kick. You better not leave four up. Hess for three. I'll tell you what, it is back and forth. Shelby now back up by one. Well, the Shelby people thought they had to shoot better from the perimeter. So far tonight, they've done that. Quick shot right there, Shelby with the board. Well, I'll tell you what, both teams not shy about shooting the basketball. Well, that time, Max Hess was wide open. He just knocked down a three. You got to get out and guard the guy. Depperschmidt misfires from long range, but an offensive rebound gathered by Hudson Moore. And Fogel launches a three. And if you're Shelby, that's what you want to see. Keep him outside. Oh, downtown. I don't know if that's his range right now, but a little quick. I think you're going to be able to get that shot after running some offense. Early on, Shelby was running a little bit of of flex action. Since then, it seems like they're just doing a couple of passes and throwing up a shot. Inside to Fogel over Bruscotter. Good box out. And that's a foul on Forup. He tried to reach in for the rebound, and that's personal number three. That's a big foul for Lexington. That was, and you can just see the the box out by number 22, Max Hess. Undersized at 6'1", but he gets a body on him and forces him to go over his body and gets the big, big foul. Chance to go to the free throw line. So a timeout on the floor, 2.26 to go. And Shelby with a 25-24 lead. Brian Harder, Greg Collins from (laughs) Ashland High School, the Division II District Semifinal between Shelby and Lexington. The winner of this game will come back here on Saturday to take on Sandusky, who defeated Mansfield Senior 85-74 in a track meet in game one of our doubleheader. I don't think either team would want that game to be in the 80s next on Saturday night. Matter of fact, Lexington as a basketball team, they average about 64 points a game. They scored 66 the first time against Shelby. So they played at their pace. They scored what they want to score. Shelby averages 72. They were held to 59. You saw the Shelby student section earlier, the Lexington student section across the way, and Lexington's uh, requires a little bit more sunglasses. A little bit brighter in their apparel. Well, I think they all, uh, after the game, they're all going to be out on Route 30 and <laughs> doing a little uh, construction, maybe 
there are some potholes out there, so. Free again, throw up and good. Again, Shelby, you got to take advantage of being at the free throw line. You were able to get to the uh, Lexington foul difficulty early in the quarter. Now you got to take advantage of it. And Hess splits the pair. And the Whippets with a two-point lead as we approach the two-minute mark of the second quarter. And a blocking foul. That's going to be on Bruscotter. And that's his second. And that's big. Boy, when you're a key player like Brock Stoddard, you've got to make sure you get in front of the man. You can't afford any cheap fouls early. He's going to, coach is going to keep him in, is he? Uh, with two fouls, with 2.16 to go. You see some of our comments at the bottom of the screen there in the fan zone. Owen oh, Stevens guarantees a win. So far over 1,200 people watching our live stream. Welcome to high school tournament basketball here on OH Report. Now I'm nervous. I thought it was only my wife you and thought a it was few friends. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> Yeah, Adam's kind of stuck watching us. Yeah, well, he is. He is. But again, there's no better producer around. Fogel in the lane. And an offensive rebound and more spins in the lane, puts it up and in, and that's a huge bucket for Lex. They tie it at 26. Yeah, because he is the inside presence right now with uh, uh, Baden four up out. He is the inside presence and, again, continues their success on the offensive boards. But they are smaller inside, obviously. Here, and they go zone right here. Chance for Shelby to get to the hoop or maybe just shoot a corner three. Casey Lance launches from downtown. He now has nine, and he puts Shelby back up by three. And he was three for six from the three the first time around with these two teams. Moore with the left hand. And it's out of bounds, and it will go the other way. The last three was knocked down, you said, by Casey Lance. Well, his mother, of course, the, the girls coach over at Shelby, ultra successful over there. So, Can you imagine the conversations around the table at Thanksgiving at their house? Well, it, I wonder if there's anything positive about his game. It's all you can do this, you can do that. Yeah. If you want more turkey, you're going to have to do a better job of this. You have to box out to get the cranberry sauce. And, of course, the whole family. You remember his brother a couple of years ago, just a great player playing at the next level right now. Shelby will slow it down as we go under a minute to go. They have a three-point lead. And Lex probably saying, listen, we're only down three. The most we could be down six. And we've got maybe arguably our best player sitting on the bench and maybe our second best player sitting on the bench right now. Uh, so Lex is not upset. Shelby's saying, listen, we don't want you to get any momentum going into the half. Starts to pick up the pace a little bit with 20 seconds to go. Now how's this for an advantage? Lexington running a, an odd front zone with a 6'8 man out front. <laughs> That's pretty good when you can have big guys inside too. And, and it's thrown away. Right. Lex is going to get the last shot. And a three at the buzzer does not go. And Shelby with a three-point lead at the intermission. You're watching high school tournament basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Report founder Brian Skaronsky, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys' high school basketball returns after this.
Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warrant. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Are you looking for a solid career? Job security, great pay, and rapid advancement? An important role with a global leader that invests in state-of-the-art technology, develops world-class solutions, and is committed to a cleaner tomorrow? Yeah, we have just what you're looking for. dipped with real milk is the only way to make a milkshake. You can't trust machines. Now how come? Once I got a machine made shake from some other place and it clanked and clunked and spit up a glut into my glass. And do you know what it was made of? Artificial turf. What? No. Powder. What? Powder. Chowder. Get half price milkshakes during happy hour only at Steak and Shake.
Oh, good. Bad news is Buck talked with my wife. It is halftime here at <laughs> Ashland High School, and we are ready for the Spitzer Motors of Mansfield halftime show. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins, and Greg Collins' fan club is swarming <laughs> around us, and they're disrupting things here at Ashland High School. And as we take a look at the halftime numbers, um, this was a far cry from the offensive output we saw in our first game. The mm -hmm. defense is doing a lot more in game two of our doubleheader. Well, they are. And, you know, both teams are doing a, a, an outstanding job rebounding the basketball. Surprising, Shelby is out rebounding Lexington, of course, with with Forup getting in foul trouble, with Fogel getting in foul trouble, that takes away a little from their offensive rebounding. Well, it takes away a lot from Lex's offensive rebounding ability, but those guys will be out here in the in the third period, certainly. But, you know, you, you look at which team is being more aggressive. Well, right now, Shelby's been to the line, shot 10 free throws. Lexington's only shot three. 18 rebounds for Shelby, and one of your keys was Lexington doing the job that they normally do on the glass, and so far Shelby is winning the battle of the boards. Yeah, they you know they've done a really nice job of checking out. Um, you know, Lex's game plan, as it is every game, is pound the ball inside, whether it's post entry or whether it's dribble in, uh, dribble penetration, and then go after the offensive boards. But Shelby is doing a, a really strong job, and you would think that because we have two very well coached basketball teams that they're going to do things fundamentally right. Individually, both teams really playing to the nines. Braden Fogle, nine points. Elijah Hudson, nine points for Lexington. Shelby, Alex Bruscotter, nine points. Casey Lance, nine points. They all are the leading scorers in tonight's ball game. The big story, too, in the first half is the foul trouble for Lexington as three of Scott Hamilton's starters picked up two fouls in the first half. Yeah, they did, and, uh, you know, they're going to start. I'm sure they're going to all start the third period. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the officials play it. It was a little tighter than I would expect. Some offensive uh, fouls, maybe, you know, I don't know if, Maybe a little bit of falling down a little bit early, but either way, they were called fouls. And, you know, does that work against Baden Forup? Does he decide to fade away instead of playing his game of being strong and powering it inside? You know Hudson Moore is going to continue to power it inside. That's what he likes to do. So it'll be interesting to see how these players play it. I don't think it's going to have any effect on Fogel. He knows he's got to get the ball to the rack. He knows he's got a good pull-up. I think that's what he's going to do, and he'll continue to do that. Tonight's District 2 semifinal is being brought to you by Simonson Construction, Vault Wine Bar, Spitzer Motors of Mansfield, and Charter Next Generation along with Mechanics Bank. Brian Harder, Greg Collins from Ashland High School. This Division 2 district semifinal between Lexington and Shelby. The winner of this game will take on Sandusky on Saturday. Now, the one guy that got away from here that I wanted to talk to about our conversation that we had in the pregame was Buck Morton, who was the point guard mm -hmm. on your second state title team. And I didn't get the opportunity to tell him that he, along with Jamie Fike, did not stand a chance against your first state title team, like, <laughs> like you were saying so uh, brashly before the I, game started. I'm sure he would argue that, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you that I keep all my former players away from my good friends because they have too many stories. I've got too many skeletons in the closet. Getting ready to get underway here. Oh, okay. We can have him reach out to Adam, and they can put together a little <laughs> montage of let's talk about our life with Greg Collins. Well, fortunately, my friends are all so old that they don't go online, whether it's Okay, Facebook Buck Morton's or, not that old. Well, no, not Buck. He's a former player, but, you know, my old-time friends. I could tell them stories, and they believe anything. Lexington down by three as we get ready to start the second half. Braden Fogle, Baden Forup, all on the floor with two personals. You know, this is a game where, you know, both teams are getting up and down the court a little bit, but not, as you would, as you said, not at the pace of that first game. You know, that was a game that got you a little dizzy. 
But this game we can keep up with a little bit. Joe I'm Baylog said at the half, we saw a few more sets in the first half of this game, and there's one right there as Bruff Scotter gets his first bucket of the third quarter. And that's always a sign of good coaching. Coming out of a timeout and having a set that, that works, uh, that, that, that's a good set, good play. Lexington's going with uh, a little Iverson cut. One cuts over. Hudson Moore, one cuts under. Fogel looking for post entries. There's four up from the baseline. And Rebound again. down to Max Hess. And we'll see how four up handles that with, with three fouls. Is he can continue to jump shoot, or will he use his strength, use his dribble, try to get to the hoop? Shelby looks like they're spacing the court a little bit, a little bit hard of a pass, but trying to space the court a little bit, trying to get some dribble penetration lanes. That time just not able to convert. Ball out of bounds. It will go to Lexington. And I think we saw the first possession by Lex. They're going to stick with that game plan, which, you know, why not? Pound it inside. Pound it inside. Fogel looked inside to Forup. Hudson Moore on the left side doesn't go. Tries to control the rebound. Great and hustle. Falls into Elijah Hudson's hands and a foul on Shelby. Hudson Moore with great hustle. Re relentless going after the basketball and saving it to his own team. Moore leans into Ramsey, no whistle, grabs his own miss. And I think they didn't call anything because it was Hudson Moore that, that initiated it. He leaned into the defense. Jump stop, shot, limit one shot. Lex is off with the ball. Moore takes off in the lane, another shot fake, puts it up, no, but he's fouled. And Hudson Moore will go to the line. Quiet two points so far for Hudson Moore. Shelby, of course, paying special attention to Forup, giving a little help before he catches the basketball, giving help when Fogel gets it, trying to cut down dribble penetration. That's give Hudson Moore a couple of chances here to penetrate himself, use his strength, and get pretty good looks at the basket. Moore with 10 points and six rebounds in the sectional title win over Willard. Connects on the free throw, and it's now a four-point ball game. Greg Galloway calls out another special. Good ball reversal, good movement backside. Not a bad player to get it to. Ramsey for three. And, and if Fogel skies for the rebound. And if you're Lex, I think that's what you would like to force. Hudson in the lane. And it's taken right out of the hands of Fogel by Bruss Goddard and then a reach and a foul called on Elijah Hudson. But a great opportunity that time from Lex. Again, they were able to get the ball within two or three feet. They used the dribble. They had the size. The shot didn't go, but I, I think if you're, you're Coach Hamilton, you're saying, listen, yeah, I can't draw up anything that's going to get a better look than that. Russ Goddard has it blocked, but an offensive rebound put back up and in by Casey Lance, and he will go to the line. Again, that's where it's tough on Brooks Stoddard. He's got 6'8", defending him out in the perimeter. He beats him off the dribble, but he's got 6'4 to 6'7 inside. Tough to finish, but you're right. Lance is there to pick up the rebound. That's the third foul on Hudson Moore, so he has three, and Baden Forup has three for Lexington. So we'll keep an eye on that as the second half develops. Backdoor pass to Hudson Moore in a layup. Caught Shelby sleeping a little bit. Nice bounce pass. Good backdoor cut by Moore. Shelby tries to answer at the other end, and a technical foul is going to be called as Elijah Hudson got a little too chatty as Bruss Goddard is going to go to the line. Yep, Bruss Goddard beats him to the hoop. Block, foul. 
right in front of the referee. So we will shoot four free throws. And I wouldn't be surprised if Brooks Stoddard doesn't shoot all four and then see Shelby with the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he's an 85% free throw shooter on the season. And that's a, can turn out to be a big mistake for Lexington. Well, when we looked at the first half stats, Shelby got to the free throw line much more than Lexington did. They were more aggressive. Uh, again, when you're playing a team and you know it's going to be a close game, you, you know we've talked about it so often, converting the free throws is important. Russ Goddard shooting number three, and it hits off the back of the iron. I think he's getting tired now, that shooting <laughs> arm. And there's number four. He hits three out of four to push the lead to eight. Russ Goddard now with 14. And Shelby gets the basketball. And we have a stoppage of play. I think there's maybe a little bit of blood on a player. So Hudson Moore is going to go over to the bench. You would think if there's going to be blood on anybody, it would be Hudson Moore. He is one guy, not that the other ones don't, but he just likes to get his nose into everything. He just hard, aggressive, scrappy young player. Type every coach loves to coach. You love to have players like that. Getting some quick training work on the Lexington sideline. He will stay in the game. So he is on the floor with Depper Schmidt, Caudill, Forup, and Fogel. They get it into Bruss Goddard, who pulls up from the free throw line. Yeah, well, good cut. Just before he caught the ball, just beat Fogel on a move. Largest lead of the night for Shelby. They're up by 10. Lexington with a little. Action to get the ball post entry inside. Again, nice move. Keep feeding the ball inside to Forup, and he uses his dribble to get even better position. Forup now with eight. Nice pass to Bruss Cotter. Almost picked up a foul on Fogel. Lex with the numbers. And Caudill tried to feed more, cutting to the basket. Now they have numbers. And that is a block, and I think I, I, I think that could have been an offensive foul on Bruscott. Well, I didn't have the best angle either, but it looked like he, you know, got him on the shoulder, which. Well, he was moving. He yeah, wasn't set. Right, and he got him on the shoulder. Yeah, you got to step in front of the guy. Now, given Bruss Goddard is 6'7". And he, if I remember correctly, you mentioned he has two fouls, Bruss Goddard? Bruss Goddard has two, yes. So that would have been a big third yes. foul for him. Yes, yes, it would have been. But as it is, the personal on Alex Depperschmidt, and that's his first. Russ Goddard now with 19, and the lead is 11. So the Minutemen are going to need a run, and the ball poked away, and a foul called by the official under the baskets on Bryson Baker. But you saw, watch what Fogel's going to do. Drive right, but be ready to spin back left. You know that's what's coming. Third team foul on Shelby. Good post entry. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, good. Uh, a good. Uh, we just called a California screen, uh, cross screen inside, and defense just didn't switch, didn't help. Too easy. Four up now in double figures with ten. And a. Runner inside and good by Baker. Yeah, it was a good ball reversal by Shelby, and Baker just put his head down and was. Good move. Here comes the spin, the shot, the make. 
Uh, this is the third time that I've seen Fogle this year. In each game, his offensive confidence just seems to grow. And, again, my third time, well, I know you saw him uh, against Mount Vernon. To me, he's kept him in the games that I've seen. I mean, his scoring, <laughs> and he's only a freshman. Depper Schmidt with the foul. That's his second, and team foul number six on the Minutemen. If you're Shelby, you would love to spend the fourth quarter at the free throw line. Again, they spread the court. Maybe looking from dribble penetration lanes. Short Russ got it from about eight feet. And that's really easy for the District 6 player of the year. He now has 21. Bassalone for three. Big three, big three by Barcelona right there. They needed to hit an outside shot. Try to open up something inside. And Bruce Goddard tries to answer at the other end, and he does. Big shot by Bruce Goddard. If you can do it, I can do it. Well. Moore will slow it down. They look inside to Forp, who's guarded by Bruce Goddard. Fogel attacks, he hits it, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Cardinal Sin, if you're Shelby, you can't left a guy go to his strong hand. You know he's going to go left. When he dribbles right, he spins back left. You can't let him beat you left. Fogel with a great job going left and then just using his size advantage, athletic ability, and getting a chance for a three-point shot. And, and we have a violation yep. on Lex. Forty-nine forty, Shelby. Adams giving me sign language, and I don't even know the English language. I can't. <laughs> Brooks Brooks Goddard, Goddard from the elbow. That one at least they forced outside the lane area. And Fogel misfires. And a rebound falls into the hands of Casey Lance. Little runner in the lane. Doesn't go by Brubaker. I think he wanted to get to the hoop, but he saw uh, four up there. Hudson Moore. And a good check out by Bruscotter that time. Shelby's off and running. Hess tacks on the baseline. It's tipped away, and here comes Lex. And you could tell Fogel was looking to spin to his left. Shelby's off and running. They have Euro. Good defense. And Depperschmidt almost hit the deck. You got a little lull in the scoring right now. Scott Hamilton wants to slow it down a little bit with a minute to go in the third quarter. I think he's going to try to run a set. They've been successful with some cross-screening inside, trying to get the ball inside to Forup. Again, they get it inside, double down, jump hook. Good box out by Bruckstadter. They're off and running. Lance gives it up to Hess for a layup. And again, we talked about last week, well, Willard has some sex, sex, success on transition. Today, Shelby do a little bit of success outrunning Lex down the court. Moore with a shot fake inside, grabs his own miss. And once he gets it right there, you're not taking it away. Nice, strong player inside. Now with 21 seconds to go, you know, well, you would think Shelby's going to go for the last shot. What kind of a set are they going to run? Good move by Lex, taking four up out. You don't want him to pick up foul number four here in the last possession. Joe Caudill comes in as Forup sits down. Yeah, it looks like Lex is going to go to a zone action. It looks like a 1-3-1, which will leave somebody in the corner open. And they come up with a steal. Fogel with a Wow. Big, what can you say about the freshman yeah, in transition? Big turnover. And Bruss Goddard throws it up at the buzzer. Eight more minutes to go. In this district semifinal, Shelby 51, Lex 44. 
We'll be back right after this. You're watching Boys High School Tournament Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. The Shelby Whippets trying to punch their ticket to the Division II District Championship on Saturday, taking on Sandusky. And they have a seven-point lead as we start the fourth quarter. Now let's look. Shelby had a nine-point lead, but Lex gets a steal, gets a layup. They get first possession here, so they can go from nine down to five. Depperschmidt with a drive and a layup. And just like that, a five-point game. Ball batted around, but another offensive rebound by the Whippets. And Baden Forup with a big rebound for Lexington. Up ahead to Fogle. And Fogle cuts it down to three. And a timeout on the floor. 7.28 to go. And here comes Big Lex. Well, they, they're out in transition. First, they get an easy basket on a set play from the corner. A layup, then they get a layup from just beating Shelby down the court. There you see the student section of Lexington, and they are fired up here as their Minutemen have pulled it within three with 7.28 to go. And, and they it, do not take direction well. And, <laughs> and with 20 seconds to go in the third period. So we're talking... 30 seconds here, 20 there. In the last 50 seconds, Lexington's gone on that run where it's not an extremely high-scoring game. Neither team has had really big runs, I don't think. But here, Lex is in the beginning of a big run. So now let's see how Shelby responds coming out of the timeout. And we've talked about the ability to hit something on a design play out of a timeout. Let's see... What Shelby does here now with a three-point lead and 7.28 to go. And if you're Lexington, you're telling these kids, listen, you guys that have three fouls, it's the fourth quarter now. Play. Don't worry about it. Exactly. You play. Looks like Lexington going to a little box in one or diamond in one. Obviously chasing Bruckstotter. Ball kicked, and it will stay at this end of the floor. So what it looks like Lex is doing, four players are in a zone. One player, Hudson Moore, chasing Bruckstotter. If he does catch the ball, they're probably going to be Hudson Moore and whoever's close to him in the zone defending him, trying to cut down on those 15-foot shots in the lane. Now it looks like they've gone back man. Nice backdoor cut. But I'll tell you. Russ Goddard could not handle it. It goes out of bounds, and a three-pointer can tie the game for Lexington. Elijah Hudson, a threat from long distance. He has nine. Here comes the Iverson cut again, which led to a post-entry the last time. I think they look for the post-entry. Inside the four-up. And four up pulls Lexington to within one. It's hard to double down when a guy catches a ball about a foot from the basket. You're going to have to push him out from the paint. Well, especially with the post skills that he has. Well, exactly. Left or right-handed shot does not go by Lance, but he's fouled. And the foul will be... 
on Elijah Hudson, and that's his fourth personal. Lance at the line with 12. Chance to stop the bleeding a little bit here. But you, again, you, you saw Lex, when they fell down nine or 10 points, they continue to try to pound the ball inside, and they're gonna continue to do that. They're obviously with one possession away, but hey, let's just keep pounding it in. Shelby up by three. And Shelby playing an odd front zone. Elijah Hudson did hit a three in the corner the first half in that. And he get inside to four up. And a huge rebound by Casey Lance. It was a good job of doubling. Russ Goddard with a leaner, but an offensive rebound doesn't go. And four up with the rebound in Lexington again. The other way, down by three. Depper Schmidt for the tie. And I think Ramsey would love to have that one back. A tip, and it drops by Elijah Hudson. Lexington pulls back to within one. And again, it's shoot until they miss that possession. That is vintage Lexington basketball exactly. pounding the offensive glass. Or shoot until you make it, and three opportunities. Shelby's done a great job up until now rebounding the ball. Hess. Trying to get inside. Lance nice for the right move. hand. That was a nice spin move that time by Casey Lance. Back to the zone. Hudson for three. And, we're and all we tied are up. tied at 55 and a timeout on the floor as Elijah Hudson ties it. He's got 14 and we are knotted at 55. He might be the best perimeter shooter that they have. Well, either he or Hudson Moore, you're right. They, you know, he, 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 and he likes it out there. He wants to shoot the three-point shot. I think if you're Shelby, you still want to force that perimeter shot as much as possible. Maybe get a hand up, and they were close. That was just good offense. But, again, the score's tied. I'm sure Lex is saying, listen, all right, that's fine, but let's keep pounding it in. They're being a little hesitant getting to the basket right now down at their end. Pound it in down at your end. There you see the student section uh, getting into it a little bit here as we are tied at 55. The winner of this game takes on Sandusky, the number one seed on Saturday for a Division II district championship. Elijah Hudson coming out of the game. So he's rewarded by hitting a three. <laughs> But I'm sure they're just giving him a blow. And again, he has, what, 14, four fouls? Yes. So let's see how Shelby responds Under and how they answer the Lexington run. And Lex comes back with their man-to-man. -man. Lance looks inside. Bruss got her for three. Good set play. Ramsey aggressive with the rebound. And Ramsey wisely slows it up. Russ Goddard. Off balance, it drops, he's fouled, it'll go to the line. And the foul is on Hudson Moore and he is slow to get up. I think he took a shot to the face. He now has four fouls. And we take a look at the contact inside. And he might have caught an inadvertent elbow. And Bruss got her to the line with 26. Now, Brian, I don't know if you've mentioned it, but it, it looks to me like uh, Ramsey, uh, Isaiah Ramsey, maybe is favoring that ankle a little bit. Now, we had their game last week. Didn't he turn that and come out I, of the game? I believe he did, A little yes. bit in the first half, but he came back in, but... You know, he just doesn't look the same no, tonight. No, yeah, I think he's favoring that. Russ Goddard completes the three-point play to put Shelby back up by three. Iverson cut again. Again, that's led to some post entries for Lex. Fogel to the left. 
And Bruscotter clears the miss. Great box out that time. Now it will come down to defense for Lex Bruscotter in the lane, lays it up and in. And with his offhand, outstanding move. And it's tough to give help when a guy goes north-south. Russ Goddard with 29 inside a foul on Ramsey. Hudson and Moore with a good cut. Watch, let's watch the shot the Watch him end. go to his left hand. Nice lay in. It looked like Baden Fort maybe was a little hesitant because he does have three fouls. But, hey, you only got, I believe it's three. You know, you got to step in there and protect the rim. Hudson Moore now with eight. Joe Caudill into the lineup for Lexington. And Elijah Hudson will sit down. Two big free throws. Timeout on the floor, 3.46 to go. Shelby with a three-point lead. Again, a big welcome to our over 1,500 viewers watching this game on OH Report. Game being brought to you by Simonson Construction. From concept to completion, we can help you make a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. By the Vault Wine Bar, there is always something going on at the Vault. Eat, drink, enjoy. By Spitzer Motors of Mansfield, home of the Spitzer Shield, shielding you from the unexpected on all purchases. Order a new vehicle exactly the way you want it, even if it's not in stock. And by Charter Next Generation, hiring for high-paying jobs in a cutting-edge environment. And by Mechanics Bank, that's better. Brian Harder, Greg Collins from Ashland High School in this Division II district semifinal between Shelby and Lexington. Shelby with a three-point lead, 3.46 to go. And I'm sure somewhere around here there are some dusky coaches waiting and watching to see who they're going to face on Saturday. Or they just may go home and watch our yeah, there game you on the go. If report. they're smart, they're going to get everything from us. Well, the Shale Shelby fans are up. They've got the ball. Big possession. Every possession the rest of the game, obviously, is big right now. Russ Goddard with a game high, 29. See where Shelby is spreading the court a little bit, going five out. I think he wants... Uh, Fogel to maybe come a little closer so we can try to beat him off the dribble. I would think it's too early to hold the ball for the, try to hold it for the game, but just trying to get Lex to play defense on the majority of the court to give dribble lanes. Hess drives inside, and they kick it back out to Lance. A lot of time. Lance Good attacks move. the basket, and an offensive follow by Lance. Yeah, Baker with a good move. Better offensive rebounding by Lance. Pushes the lead back to five. Fogel for three. And that's a huge three for the freshman, and it's a two-point game. And that's not his strength, but it was there. Bruss Goddard tries to answer at the other end. It's poked out of bounds. Lexington wants the ball, and they're going to say it went off of the Minutemen. There you see the three by Fogel. Spin nice side defense. is blocked by Fora. And it's out of bounds. It will go to Lexington. That How about was... this for the freshman? The district semifinal, he's got 20. Yeah, well, he had 21 the first time around. He's a tough matchup for them. Now, I think if you're Shelby, you're saying, hey, look, we want him to shoot that three. But he's a big-time player. He did knock it down, and now they have a chance to take the lead. Hudson thought about the three. They get it inside to Forup. You don't see that post entry very often. Forup from the baseline, and we're tied at 62. Two minutes to go. Every possession big. Ross, they <laughs> paid off the three. For Bruss Goddard and Shelby back up by three. The banks are open in Ashland. Wow. 32 for the District 6 Player of the Year. 
that, I, I don't know what to say about that shot. You know, from our angle, we could see that it was going to be long, but hey, as long as it goes in. Think he called it off the glass? Uh, afterwards, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but again, all right, now look, we've got two minutes to go, a lot of time. Lexington with three timeouts left, Shelby with two. Lex, you know, a lot of possessions left in this basketball game. I'll be surprised if they do anything but pound it inside the four. You know, whether they've run that Iverson cut where they've knocked it inside, uh, that one where, geez, it was a post entry from the weak side. Uh, you know, get the ball inside the four up, let him do his business inside. If they double too much, maybe kick it out to a three point shooter. Lexington down by three. We're under two minutes to go. A trip to the district title game on the line. Shelby has some success there a little while ago going with an odd front zone, but they're going to come out and play man-to-man -man right now. Here's Depper the Smith. Iverson. Backdoor, Backdoor cut. cut. Fogel with a jam, and Lex pulls to within one. Nice outbound, nice play off the uh, timeout. Again, a lot of time left. Fogel now with 22. Russ Goddard picked up by the freshman. 18 fouls on Lexington, so Shelby still shooting one and one if Lexington does foul. It looks like whoever catches the ball right away, we're looking at Brooks Stoddard, which is smart. Lex with a chance. Ball almost went out of bounds. And right in front of the Shelby bench. The foul. Well, a timeout, I think he got. Well, they called the foul. Well, did they? They Maybe they did. Yeah, they called the right. foul on Ramsey. That's his second. So Lex will go to the line in the next free throw. But again, where do you think the ball's going on this one? I'm going to say the block to number 32. I think it's going to go inside somehow. It goes inside. There's the foul. Russ Goddard picks up number three. And Baden Forb goes to the line shooting a one on one. He's a 74% free throw shooter, and he's a young man that goes to the line quite a bit. You can imagine with as many touches as he gets in a game, he gets fouled a great deal. Forb had 18 points and 11 boards in their win over Shelby back on the 14th. And this free throw ties it up at 65. We are under a minute to go. And if he makes this and Lex takes the one point lead, have they had a lead this half? I, I think Shelby has had the lead. As slim as it's been for much of it, they've had the lead. Now they're gonna have to play from behind. And a timeout on the floor under a minute to go. This is when the chess game now begins with Lexington now up by one. Shelby with the ball. Do they work it down for the last shot? I would be very surprised if they do. I would think they're going to try to play, maybe run a set right here. But you know Lex is saying, all right, fellas, I wouldn't be surprised if Lex doesn't come out maybe with a diamond and one again. We don't want Brooks Stoddard to get this shot. I know he knocked down a long three and it was a bank shot, but we don't want him to get the shot right here. Make somebody else shoot. To me, the last three or four minutes, it looks like Shelby's been a little bit hesitant with the exception of Bruckstadter. He's been the one they want to get the ball to. I think Lex knows that, but I think if you're Shelby, you know, you, you're playing. You're, you know, let, let's get a good look. Now, what the set is, remember coming out uh, the uh, – was it the fourth quarter or the second half? They had a post entry back door by Brooks Stoddard. They got a layup. You know, do they try to run that? But either way, I would think Lex is going to come out and take away the paint. Are they well, going to come out and play man or are they going to come out and play zone? Let's see what Greg Galloway opts to do here under a minute to go. Down by one. And there, Lex comes out in the diamond in one, and they're saying somebody else. Not Brooks daughter, somebody else. Nice pass. Inside to Lance. Doesn't get it to go, and Lex with a rebound. 
The freshman Caudill comes away with it. And we've got a collision at half court and what? I think we got a foul on Shelby, so Lex will go to the line shooting one and one. But, they, you know, Lex went to the diamond and one. I think Shelby was ready for it. You can't get a better look than that. So Hudson Moore will go to the line and try to add to a one-point Minuteman lead. And I think they're worried about some moisture on the floor in front of the scorer's table. Hudson Moore was just at the line a couple of minutes ago and knocked down two big free throws. He's got nine on the night. And they would love would Scott Hamilton and the Lexington faithful to stretch this out to a three-point lead. If they do, Shelby doesn't have to go for a three. A lot of time left. Well, he misses the first one. And it's poked out of bounds. It will stay with Shelby. It went off of Fogel. And I think Lex is going to come back with the diamond, and Fogel is going to be up on... Now with 38 seconds, do well, you hold for the last no, shot? No, no. Lex, I think, is coming out man, so I look for Brooks Totter to get to the paint. Well, and that's exactly what happens, and he draws the foul on Fogel. That's the third personal on Braden Fogel, and Bruss Goddard to the line with 32. Now, either way, make or miss, Lexington was in this situation, what, five days ago, six days ago? Well, and it took an inbound steal right. by the freshman. I'm interested what defense Shelby will run. You know, if it's man, Lex has a lot of things they can do. Fogel penetration. Shelby up by one. Lex being a little patient with the basketball right now. 17 seconds left. Here comes the Iverson. Hudson inside the four. And Lexington back up by one. And a foul on the inbounds by the freshman Fogel. What a mistake by the freshman, and he knew it the second he did it. Yeah, he did. He did. You know, it kind of remember last week after a big basket by Lexington, Hudson Moore with the big steal. Fogel going for the same thing here. But, hey, these are tough free throws. I don't care if you are Alex Bruckstadter. These are tough free throws. I think Lex wants to make them think about it a little bit. 6.4 seconds to go. And Lex with a one-point lead, but... Shelby will send arguably the best player in North Central Ohio to the line. Shooting two. I mean, it's in the bonus, so at least he's got two. He's got 34 on the night. And with an opportunity to hit a couple free throws to give Shelby the lead. And now, he also got to talk about what they want to do defensively if and when he makes these. And, and I'll tell you, it's a tough situation for Shelby, even if they do take a one-point lead. Six seconds left is an eternity. For Fogel, he can get the ball to the basket in six seconds easily. Usually you talk about one dribble per second. He could get there in four dribbles easily if it comes to that. So does Shelby pressure or do they drop back? First free throw up and good. Lexington has one timeout remaining. Shelby with two. And I would think Lex is going to play from here, but we'll see. The second one up, and it is no good. We are tied, but Shelby has the ball back. A whistle and a timeout taken by Greg Galloway with three seconds to go. A crucial turnover off the missed free throw. It was, and a big timeout from Greg Galloway because it didn't look like Shelby had a shot. 
I think, was that Isaiah Ramsey who got that loose ball in there? And he was surrounded by some bigs, and he knew the clock was running down. He had his back to the basket. He was just trying to throw up a prayer. And Greg Galloway with a good quick timeout. And now they have a shot uh, running out of bounds play. And again, last week, this is where Lex made the steal and finished the game. Well, but they were also going against an undersized Willard basketball team. That is not the issue tonight. Well, you're right. Will, uh, Shelby's a little bit bigger. But with that being said, the best player on the court is taking the ball out of bounds. So are they going to get it in and try to get it right back to him? Well, Lexington wants deja vu all over again. They get the ball in. Lance for the win or the lead, and he misses. And we have overtime here at Ashland High School. you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. It's Spitzer, our world revolves around. Now it is. We are looking at overtime here in this Division II District Semifinal. We are tied at 68. And a brand new set of four minutes put on the clock. A trip to the district championship game on the line and Lexington controls the tip. Remember long ago when all these kids for Lex were in foul trouble? Well, now they're starting this overtime. I don't, does anybody have four? Well, Elijah Hudson has four. And Hudson Moore has four. Lex, you but can four tell still has three. They're determined to get the ball inside. And that guy, Fogel, has four. And the long shot misses. Ramsey with a big rebound for the Whippets. Russ got her for three. And Ramsey clears an offensive rebound, keeps the ball at this end of the floor. One thing about a three, a long three, a missed shot, it's usually going to be a long rebound. Hess with a leaner inside, four with another rebound. Here comes Fogel. And Fogel has it taken away. All batted around. It will stay with Shelby. Baker with an off-balance shot inside that doesn't go. So Lex will set it up as we're under three minutes to go in overtime. Hudson lobs it in, tried to get it in over Brust Goddard, and he couldn't throw it over number five. Brust Goddard in front, Isaiah Ramsey behind. And that's five on Fogel. So the freshman fouls out with 22 points. And the Shelby faithful giving the freshman a nice round of applause as he exits the game. And that's a big loss for Scott Hamilton. That is, that because he's been playing so well. And But uh, let me tell everybody over here, you're going to see that young man for three more years. <laughs> Regardless of that, tonight will be the last time this season you'll see him. But. Well, and it's scary to think about as his game develops, the player that he can become. Oh, no question. No question. Ceiling is high. He's a worker. He's a heck of a wide receiver, too. Russ Goddard now with 37. And Shelby back up by two. 
Back inside to Moore, and it's swatted away by Ramsey. Good defense. Hudson Moore with a good cut, a good pass, had position. Ramsey just makes a better defensive play. Ramsey among one of the best shot blockers in the MOAC. Russ Cotter drives inside an offensive foul, and he has three. Actually, he's got five. He's done. And that is a huge, that is a huge, huge loss right there. They cleared out the side for Alex, and Lex saw it coming, and Hudson Moore with good defense on him and good help defense. It would have been hard for him to convert. Alex Bruscotter fouls out with 37 points, and Shelby up by two with 2.07 to go. An opportunity for Lexington? Oh, no question. I mean, the guy's got more than half your points. I think he scored all their points as of the last four or five minutes. So if you're Lex, uh, if you can get the game tied, and they do, you got to feel good. Elijah Hudson ties it. He now has 16. Lance. And a big miss for Casey Lance, and he's slow to get up. Lexington wanted the opportunity to continue that offensive possession, but the officials call the stoppage in play as Lance is still you got know, his hands down on his knees close to half court, and he's limping. And generally, you don't like to stop play unless you think a kid is in, you know, seriously injured or in danger of some type. That time, I thought Lex kind of had the ball going in transition. And well, a timeout now is going to be taken by Shelby with 1.38 to go. So you look at the freshman for Lexington. He is now out of the game. Bruss Goddard is now out of the game for Shelby. But Lexington still has number 32. Well, they do, and they don't have Bruck Stoddard guarding him. You know, Bruck Stoddard has been fronting him and doing an outstanding job. He's been checking him out. You know, Shelby's got a couple other players with a little bit of size, but not the skill level of Bruck Stoddard defensively, let alone offensively. So, you know, what does Shelby do? Do they go to play a little bit of zone? You see Isaiah Ramsey? He's limping right now. Lance? He's probably limping right now. These guys are giving it everything they have, but they've got a tough last minute 38 because you know, I think everybody in the gym knows what Lex is going to do with the basketball. And it looks like they're going to put Ramsey on him. Good athlete, but undersized. We're talking Isaiah Ramsey is what, 6'3"? Lexington with the basketball. We're tied at 70. Hudson has it poked away. And Hess races the other way for Shelby. Lays it up and in. Big steal. Big turnover. But if you're Lex, just be patient because you know what you want to do. Pound it in. Moore in the lane. And he's, there's a foul on the floor. And did they call a shooting foul or on the floor? On the floor, it'd be a one and one. Well, that's 10 team fouls on Shelby. Oh, is it 10? Okay, so they will go to the line with a bonus. So Moore at the line with nine. And he is now in double figures with 10, and he can tie it here. Now, if you're Shelby, Brian, big question. I'm going to ask you. Score's tied right here. Your best player sitting on the bench. Do you hold? Can you hold for 113? I think this changes things. Do you hold it, do you think? I think you do hold if, it for the last shot. Can you hold it? I don't know if they have the ability. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But I know at least they're going to spread it and say, if we're going to get anything, it's going to be a layup. Well, they do attack the basket, and a layup is what is made by Max Hess. You called it. And I'm sure Lex is going to come down and, again, a lot of time feeding the ball inside. They're looking for Forup. Moore off the Forup screen. And we're tied Money. at 74. 
Shelby walks it up with 32 seconds to go in overtime. And Greg Galloway just said, hey, just relax. And it does look like they will work it down. And if he's not counting yet, now he is. Down to 12 seconds. Who wants to go one-on-one? Hess from outside, no, and a big rebound down to Caudill with three seconds. Depperschmidt in transition, the layup, and Lexington wins. Lexington wins at the buzzer on a layup by Alex Depperschmidt. It does not get any better than that for drama. Watch as we look at the replay here of Alex Depperschmidt going the length of the floor. Well, again, Shelby shot the ball too early, and Lex took advantage of it. And again, I told you, you can get at least one dribble, one second per dribble. He did better than that, pushing it and getting in for a layup. Lexington with a 76 to 74 win. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Are you looking for a solid career? Job security, great pay, and rapid advancement? An important role with a global leader that invests in state-of-the-art technology, develops world-class solutions, and is committed to a cleaner tomorrow? Yeah, we have just what you're looking for. dipped with real milk is the only way to make a milkshake. You can't trust machines. Now how come? Once I got a machine made shake from some other place and it clanked and clunked and spit out a glut into my glass. And do you know what it was made of? Artificial turf. What? No. Powder. What? Powder. Chowder. Get half price milkshakes during happy hour only at Steak and Shake.
Tonight's game brought to you by Simonson Construction. From concept to completion, we can help you make a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. Also by Vault Wine Bar, there's always something going on at the vault. Eat, drink, and enjoy. By Spitzer Motors of Mansfield, home of the Spitzer Shield, shielding you from the unexpected on all purchases. Order a new vehicle exactly the way you want it, even if it's not in stock. By Charter Next Generation, hiring for high paying jobs in a cutting edge environment. And by Mechanics Bank, that's better. Time now for our Spitzer Motors of Mansfield post-game show. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins, and I tell you what, I don't know if I've ever seen two games back-to-back -back with more excitement in different ways mm -hmm. than the doubleheader that we saw tonight. First, Sandusky taking care of Mansfield Senior, and then Lexington winning in dramatic fashion in the closing seconds. And I think a lot of people thought that they were going to be tight games, and both of them were tight games. Of course, Sandusky got out to a double-figure late lead late in that game, first game, but this one, it came down to the last second. Well, and it was actually kind of a mirror of what happened against Willard. That game also came down to the final minutes, and Scott Hamilton's got to be thinking, you know what, let's blow somebody out by 20. Yeah, yeah, he's thinking this is this is good, clean living right here, baby. We, <laughs> you know, we're making the plays down the stretch to, uh, to win the basketball game, and you know, listen, I go back, Hudson Moore knocked down some big free throws. Uh, of course, Forup was a beast inside, but Depper Schmidt with that coast to coast, he just felt comfortable the entire way. And that's a sign of a good basketball player that he was going to get to the hole, either get fouled or get a shot attempt. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if anyone is happier for Alex Depper Schmidt than the freshman Braden Fogel. He committed a huge foul at the end, sent Shelby to the other end of the floor, and that night for him could have ended a whole lot differently. Yeah, it did. Uh, even though, you know, soon after he went out, Bruckstadter went out. And, you know, that, as you alluded to at the time, Bruckstadter is so much of an offensive weapon and defensive weapon for Shelby, where Braden fogel has got some other kids around him that, you know, are pretty darn good players. Uh, but Shelby responded when uh, and got a couple of steals, got a couple of layups. But, again, they just shot a little bit too early there and gave Lex the opportunity to get a rebound and a run out. Now, I grew up in the 80s, and I remember watching the Browns, and they had a lot of dramatic come-from-behind wins at the end. and. And they got the nickname the Cardiac Kids. Right. And right. I tell you what, watching Lexington so far these first two games of the tournament, they might be the new version of the Cardiac Kids. Well, no question. They could be home right now after last week, but no, they've made the plays down the stretch to get uh, a sectional title and a district semifinal title. And they got contributions from a lot of different people. Well, they they have so many weapons, uh, uh, and and they did. Uh, I was really surprised. They, they knocked down a few threes outside. I think they only had one fewer three than what Shelby had. Uh, but Shelby went to the free throw line and had some success where Lex just pounded it into the paint, whether it was by the dribble or whether it was by post entry. They got the ball inside on the paint. Let's take a look at the final stats. And we talked about the rebounding, especially in this game, and Lexington winning that battle of the boards mm -hmm. by two. Yeah, I, Shelby did an outstanding job because that is Lex's strength. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, 39 rebounds, and you know, is good. They out rebounded their opponent. That's good. Uh, but Shelby did an admirable job of checking out and and. Uh, getting the, the rebound and getting out and running with it. But 
you know, what kept Shelby in the game? Look at the free throws. You know, they made 11 more free throws. They went to the line more than, than Lexington did, and that kept them in the basketball game. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back with our player of the game right after this. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. It's Spitzer, our world revolves around. Time now for our Spitzer Motors of Mansfield player of the game and had all kinds of points all over the place. Alex Depperschmidt, though, is by far the player of the game. Although you only had four points, none bigger than the layup that you had at the end of the overtime. 
Walk us through that possession and what was going through your mind as you're racing down the floor. Um, well, Joe got a great rebound, and it kind of bounced out, and it kind of landed to me, and I looked up at the clock. It was about four seconds, and um, one of our assistant coaches, Coach Wilkie, always says, um, how many seconds, how many dribbles you had. So I just figured I'd try and get to the basket and uh, see what happens. Now, <laughs> watching you get mugged there at the bottom of the basket, are you okay? Yeah, no, it hurt. I was, I was screaming at someone to get off me. Someone was laying on my arm, but <laughs> besides that, it was, it was a good time. Well, after watching you guys in your come from behind in the back and forth against Willard, and you guys were able to make the play at the end, and tonight was back and forth, just this team just seems to have a lot of resiliency. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've gone through a lot of different stuff throughout the year, and I think that's pulled us together. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a great group. Talk about, were you guys able to see Sandusky Mansfield Sr. at all? Yep. What, what are your thoughts as you head into Saturday? Um, they're a good team. We've got to be ready to play. Well, congratulations on a, probably a huge moment for you, probably something you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Congratulations on a big shot and a big win for you guys as a team. Thank you. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back right after this. Thank you. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just... Time now for our Spitzer Motors of Mansfield post-game show. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins, and I'll tell you what, I don't know if I've ever seen two teams or two games that Lexington has played at the end of the sectional and then tonight where they've just really had to fight and claw at the end to pull it out, but they were able to, to pull it off in both situations. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about two games where the opponents had the ball where the score was tied, a chance to go for the last shot to either win or send it into another overtime, but Lex made the play last week in regulation, this week in overtime, and score to finish the game. Usually the team with the ball in a tie in the closing seconds has the chance to win or go into overtime, but both times Lex came out on top. Now I don't know where this tournament run is gonna end for Lexington. Obviously, you have been part of long tournament runs that resulted in getting down to a state championship game. And you know, along the tournament trail, you're going to have games where sometimes you're not playing your best, and you do have to pull games out like this. Well, you're right, and, and I'm not sold that, you know, Lex didn't play one of their better games, and Shelby didn't play one of their better games. I, You know, I've not seen the teams enough, but I thought they both played extremely good basketball. I mean, you look at the turnovers, there weren't a great deal of turnovers in this game, but you're right. Uh, there are going to be some close games, and you got to make the plays down the stretch, and so far in the tournament, Lex has done that. I thought it was kind of ironic that you see two really good individual performances, first by Alex Bruscotter with 37, and the other by the freshman Braden Fogel for Lexington, who finished with 22. And Alex Depperschmidt steals the show at the end. Right, right. <laughs> well, those two guys were sitting on the bench, so they weren't going to do any more help, were they? But uh, you're right, and uh, it just came down to a big defensive rebound and a run out, and he did a great job of, of knowing the time and knowing he could get the ball to the basket. And unless he got fouled, he was determined to get to the hoop. Well, now we know it's going to be Lexington and Sandusky on Saturday for the district title. What are your thoughts on that matchup? heading into Saturday? Two completely different teams. One that's all perimeter and one that's built to pound it inside. So who, which team can enforce their will on the other one? Yeah, I mean, people will say, well, Sandusky's just gonna pressure him. Yeah, but if they don't turn it over, Lex is gonna pound it inside and shoot till they miss, or shoot until they make it. And you're gonna say at the other end, well, you know, Sandus uh, senior uh, Lexington is just going to sit inside and make Sandusky shoot outside. Well, yeah, but you got to get down the court first to do that, and they do have some shooters also. Well, with the win, Lexington is now 20 and four, and the Minutemen advance to the district championship game on Saturday, where they will take on Sandusky. Shelby 
ends the season 20 and 4. The final score tonight in overtime, Lexington defeats Shelby 76 to 74. Our thanks to tonight's broadcast team. Our producer was Adam Thompson and the fine camera work courtesy of Jory Hollenbeck. Most of all, our thanks to you for joining us. Once again, the final score, Lexington 76, Shelby 74 in overtime. For Greg Collins, I'm Brian Harder. So long from Ashland.